Hello everybody. Today I'm going to take you through a little bit of my thought process as I'm creating this three inch round stone. Um, normally I would just take out and edit out some of the things that I would change, but because I don't plan my projects ahead of time, I'm going to take you through a little bit of my changes and thought process. So I'm using Pole Blue Waverly Chalk Paint and I've base coated the stone. Get my compass and I've set it to one inch and I've drawn a circle and then I've opened it up another quarter of an inch, so it's one and a quarter, and drew another circle. Now these are just basic guidelines. I, I just throw guidelines out and I, and I use them um, as I will. I don't plan them. With the just plain regular white, I'm putting a, it's about a five millimeter, I think that was, um, flat tool and making a center dot. And with the same white, you can use any kind of white. You can use just a regular plain white. You can use an enamel, a pearl, doesn't matter. I'm doing eight even uh, dots around. And then I'm coming back with the midnight blue. And uh, later on, I'm going to come back and I'm going to take this midnight blue out and I'm going to change it and change it to uh, blue quartz, the uh, folk art treasure blue quartz. Only because my color scheme later on goes much better with the blue quartz and I don't realize that at this point. So um, it's up to you what color you want to do. Now with the same midnight blue, I have my larger uh, round ball tool and um, you can see that it's the green one. So all tools are not equal, but that's what I'm using the large dot on the, uh, the large side of the blue uh, green tool. Now with the blue quartz that I just showed, I'm doing a little series of walking dots down on every other dot. Now I want you to notice how stringy and thick this paint is. So when I lift it up, it's making quite a string. And you want to go slow and come straight up because if you don't, you're going to end up with streaks and, and paint just being, um, you know, drawn across your, your uh, thing and, it, and it's a mess. So be just really careful. See how stringy that is? Okay, so I've put a little bit of a dollop there and then I turned my tool around and I'm making a, um, a swish. It's kind of an unconventional kind of swish. It's more of like a, almost like a fancy seven, I guess. I don't know. Um, look at that string, my gosh. Anyway, uh, I flipped my tool around to use the smaller side and I pulled it over and out and then down just to give it a little interest. Now with the white again, I'm just doing a couple of swishes. Everybody gets a little bit nervous about swishes, but here's the thing. Like I used to be panicked about them too, but once I realized that the slower and the more nervous I was about it, the worse it was. So just put your tool down, make sure you have enough paint and pull away, pull, push, just, just go for it. It's, it'll be fine. Now, um, yeah, I threw a little bit of a white dot on the bottom of the blue just to kind of give it an anchor. And now with the uh, rose shimmer, I'm just putting some um, some little swooshes in there. Here I'm putting every other, and there's another thing, I like to do every other when I'm doing my patterns. This way here, if I want to leave it like that, I can. If I want to come back and add so that it's even all the way around, I can <laughs> and I will. On this one here. Now with the white, I was trying to get an even amount, but I hadn't really planned it very well. And so I have ended up with an odd amount of dots. And that'll come into play in a little bit. And I'll show you how um, I quote unquote fix it. So I usually try to do even. Uh, it leaves you more options. And then you'll see how with the odd uh, number coming up in a bit, why the even would have been so much better and the odd number of, of dots uh, cost me a little bit of a problem. So you can see what I'm doing here with a tiny tool. This was like a paper tool, I think. It was like a paper punch tool or something that I got from Dollar Tree. Um, it just makes a really, really fine little dot. It's nothing special. It was just something that I picked up. And now I'm using the metallic rose again, and I'm just adding another series of dots all the way around. Uh, later on, I'm going to come back and I'm going to make these dots a little bit plumper. So again, as you see, I'm doing one thing and then I'm going to come back and, and change it. 
and here I'm adding those other four metallic rose uh, dots that I uh, metallic magenta rose um, that I took I talked about before so I like to fill up space and I like to do it once here I have the um, every other so I have four four patterns coming out of eight dots and you can see that I'm just trying to um, bring them out and fill fill up that space so that I have my four even I want to call them spokes but I don't I think you know what I mean just kind of branching branching out and on one of these sets I think it's the first set of white dots that I laid down there later on I'm going to come back and again and I'm going to add a, a larger dot on top I'll show you that later too now, I thought it'd be kind of cool to just add in a little bit of this uh, blue flash color shift paint doing some off-center white top dots here and um, I love top dots it's two things about me you should know by now is I love top dots and I love hologram okay so here's another series of the magenta swishes and I like to just alternate my colors I like to make them pop like I love red so uh, yeah you're going to see that I put a little bit of that in there and again when you when you're doing something if you're not sure about what you want to do and that's me um, don't go overboard at first just kind of keep it simple and then you can always go back and add to it later I do a lot of back and forth and a lot of times in my editing I will uh, try to streamline it so that it's not so uh, annoying this time I didn't really streamline very much I kind of left it in it's not a very long video I think it's about I don't know somewhere around 20 minutes or so and you can get to see that uh, I'm not very organized when I start. <laughs> I'm just walking a few little dots in. And again, walking the dots is another thing that people kind of worry about. Just put down that first dot and then just move your tool. Just keep going. They'll automatically get smaller and you'll, you'll get used to um, how far to space them. It's muscle memory. It's, it's mind brain memory. So, at first it's going to be off you, you I mean I had not dotted for a while um, for various reasons and when I came back um, I, <laughs> I had to almost relearn everything all over again because uh, yeah I, I I was just all over the place okay so here you're going to see that I random dotted all the way around didn't count and you can see that my spacing is a little bad and now I'm doing every other and I'm putting a nice little dollop of white so eventually I'm going to get to the end here and you can see how I'm starting to get my my dots are getting closer and closer together and um, it's really obvious as we're looking at it like this now but I'm going to run out of space I'm getting really close the spacing is bad and now I'm in the predicament of having an uneven amount of number of, of dots and like what do I do well in this case because of my spacing being off I'm just laying that dot right there right right smack on underneath that blue one where it really shouldn't be and so I have spacing that is still off on the on not this one but the next one that I do you see this three there and I'm just going to put that big white dot underneath there and I'll tell you what after I was as I was doing that and I kept going around I stopped and I looked at my piece and I'm thinking did I just do that where where did I do that because I really couldn't find it um, go ahead see if you can find it really easily you can't it, it's there you will find it but it's not so obvious that it just jumps out at you so it's not a huge deal if you're doing something specific or something you're trying to sell and you want it to be perfect then you'll want to take a little bit more care but um, you all know me now I'm not all about perfection I'm about just doing what makes me happy and um, yeah so I think it looks fine I'm, I'm not going to try to fix it 
Again, I'm using a midnight blue here, and I will come back at the end. You'll see I am going to scrape that off. I'm going to actually put some hologram on there, and I'm not going to like it. And I'm going to take it all off, and I will show you that at the end. Now those top dots there, those will stay, and I'm going to add the other four. And I am coming back to those magenta, and I am plumping them up a little bit by just redotting over them. At first, they just weren't quite big enough for me. And as I went along, I was like, yep, yeah, just go back and redot them. So I'm just incorporating a little bit more of that uh, color shift blue, blue flash onto the white. It, um, it's, it's kind of obvious on the top there, the way I'm, you can see it in the camera right now. But in person, and when it's done, that purple doesn't really show up very much. Look at the string on that blue. See that? Metallics and um, specialty paints, especially the metallics, they string like that. And you can, you can make a mess. So please, just remember, pull straight up and don't move too fast. Once you get to know your paint, you'll, you'll know just how far, how fast you can go. I know this white, I've used this white for a long, long time, and this particular bottle I've had for a while, so I know, I know the consistency of it, and I know that I can uh, move along fairly quickly. Once again, I had done every other dot, and um, when I got around, I had forgotten that it was <laughs> an uneven number, and so when I got around, I'm like, oh, geez, this, this is not one of the places that I can, um, you know, try to fix it. So I had to go around and fill in all of the other dots. I'm just doing a little bit of um, finishing touches here so that it doesn't look like it's so uh, rough. I, the Just the blue alone was looking kind of rough. And I like my things to look finished. Now, I often do this too. If you've watched a lot of my videos, you'll see that I'll do a plain white base. And then I come back with the white metallic and I'll go over um, almost all, if not all, of the white with the metallic right on top of it, the pearl metallic on top of it. And I do that for a couple of reasons. Um, one, sometimes my base underneath is a little bit dark and my white paint doesn't, it kind of bleeds through. So I'll use the white metallic to, you know, whiten that up. And also, um, I'll do it because I like the way it gives it a, a, a different, like almost a 3D effect, it like it raises um, the design up. So it's not a bad thing to do. I like to do that, and um, I almost always will do that. So just keep that in mind. You can do that actually with any of the colors of the paint. You know, if you're using a flat blue and you want to make them a little bit more dimensional, you can always come back with a... Uh, a metallic blue of the same shade, same color, even a different different shade. If you come back with a different shade, different color, just don't cover the whole um, swish or dot. Just just do like a piece of it and let that other light dark color come up underneath and then the uh, metallic on top or towards the center. So I had to take a break just now. My doorbell was ringing. We're having some work done on the house and the fellow was here to take some measurements. Anyway, um, this would have been a great time for you to hit that subscribe button and give me a thumbs up if you like what you see. I'd also like for you to leave your comments and questions down below. I do read them and I will answer them. And I'm really very interested in what you think. So please, uh, please do sub uh, subscribe and leave me your comments and questions. All right, so I have done some off-center top dots on the blue with pearl white. I did a uh, large dot, blue dot around the next row. Now those blue dots that I just walked, those are gonna change, surprise, surprise. We'll see in a little bit just what I'm gonna do with them, but they are gonna change. So you notice that all of my white swishes are not the same size. Some of them are smaller, some of them are bigger. I try to keep them somewhat on the level, but um, as I showed you before, I, I don't, uh, yeah, my spacing is, isn't the best. So don't get hung up on that. Um, I think the organicness is uh, much more appealing to me and it makes me happier. Less stress, 
more freedom, more fun. Okay, so now I'm just popping in some blue, blue dots here. Um, I had done some other things here, but they were none of them were making me happy, and I ended up washing them off and uh, repainting, and decided I wasn't going to bore you with it, so I took it out of the final edit. Now, again with the rose shimmer, I'm just popping a little bit of red in there, a little pop of color in between, like all of the basics. Now, when I was making this, I didn't think about it very much, but as I was editing, and I'm thinking, gee, this is very patriotic. Okay, so I took a put my chalk pencil and I just braced it up on a little sticky note pad and uh, got it to the level on the edge of the stone, the girdle of the stone, and just drew a line, just turned the stone and, and drew the chalk line so I could get a somewhat level um, guideline to put my little plump white dots on. Again, you can see this white here is a little bit sticky too. Just be careful with your metallic. Whoa, look at that, babe. <laughs> you just really, really, really need to be careful. I don't wait. So most of my paint underneath is still wet, and that's really a bad practice. <laughs> because if this strings over, then I have a mess that I have to clean up. And trust me, I've done a lot of cleaning up. So learn from my mistakes, okay? Just let it let it dry a little bit. Grab out your hair dryer or your blow dryer and uh, get the stuff dried before you go on to the next row. So I've done those three sets of dots and as you can see already, I'm changing it. I'm going back and I'm making the first dot directly underneath a little bit, a lot chubbier. Adding a few more top dots. I like to have the eye pulled up to the to the center to where my really my main design is. If you remember those three little white dots that I had put down there, you notice that there's only like really one left. And um, I plumped up one of the white ones and now I added the red in between. So I made that change. Now if I had made these large and as I go going on with my design, I decided that they were a little bit too big. It would have been a lot of work for me to try to bring them back down to size. So making them smaller and then uh, going back and, and making them a little bit bigger is easier and, and the way to go. So remember at the beginning, I told you that I was doing the center dot there in the midnight blue and then I was gonna put hologram on it and that I didn't like it and I was going to remove it. Well, here we are. This is what we're, what we're doing. I had the midnight blue and the hologram and I put that on and I was just looking at it and I moved on and I started putting hologram you know where I wanted it to be a little bit more um, noticeable you don't have to put it you know where I put it just put it wherever you I mean your colors are likely going to be different than mine your your dot sizes are going to be different and uh, you may not even do any of this but when it comes to hologram or any kind of specialty paints, anything that's going to bring, you know, your shine, your glitter, glamour to it, put it where it enhances your design the best. I am a big fan of hologram and, um, and finished paints, so I tend to, to just put it in a lot of places. <laughs> Sometimes I'll go back and I look at it and I'm like, oh no, yeah, no, that's just, just too much. So now we're just going to let this dry. And then I'm looking at it and I'm like, gee, that green, it, the hologram is coming out kind of greenish on top of the blue. And it was just very <sighs> abrasive to the eye is what I want to say. I, I was not liking it at all. So I'm scraping off the hologram. And I'm not going to be too worried about the blue that's underneath because I can go right over that with the, the new color and um, it'll, it'll hide just fine. And as you can see there, I actually still had a little bit of hologram left over. But since I'm going to add a turquoise hologram right on top of that, I didn't worry too much about uh, it being rough. So I did. I went back with my treasure blue quartz redotted the center dot, redotted those eight dots around. And then once that was dry, I let it dry. I came back with a turquoise glitter paint 
And it's basically it's the same thing as the hologram, only it, it has color to it. And this one happens to be turquoise, but it dries in the prettiest blue. And so this made me much happier. And there we go. That's, that's that. Uh, there's a lot of back and forth, a lot of um, changes, a lot of things that I started to do, a lot of things I took out, and I hope you liked them. But what do you think? Let me know in the comment section below. And please hit that subscribe button so you can know when my next video comes out.